Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on gas laws. In this video, we're going to work out the question I left you guys with in the previous video. I hope you guys had time to try it. Now let's quickly go through the question and see how we can work it out. So here we're being told that a piece of dry ice, which is a solid carbon dioxide, is placed in a test tube. The test tube is then sealed off. If the mass of dry ice is 0 0.4 grams, and the sealed test tube has a volume of 22 centimeter cubic. What is the final pressure of the carbon dioxide gas in the test tube if all the CO2 vaporizes and reaches thermal equilibrium with the surrounding at 27 degrees Celsius? Now, the first step that we have to do is just to get the information that the question gives us. So the first thing, the thing that we do with carbon dioxide and the mass of carbon dioxide, CO2, is 0 0.4 grams. Next, this is a test tube of volume. So the volume of the test tube is 22 centimeter cubic. So we want to find the final pressure of the gas in a test tube if all the CO2 vaporizes to reach the equilibrium with the surrounding at 27 degrees Celsius, implying that the temperature of the gas ends up to be 27 degrees Celsius. Now, remember what we started with was dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, but it all becomes a gas. And since it becomes a gas, it means that the volume that it will occupy will be equivalent to the volume of the container that the volume of the carbon dioxide now when it is a gas will also be 22 centimeter cubic which is just the volume of the test tube where it is we want to find the pressure when it is a gas occupying this volume now when you look at what you're given we have the temperature we have the volume when it is a gas we want to find the pressure the relationship here is the ideal gas equation so what you're saying is we want to find the pressure First, you just want to state what the ideal gas equation is. So, what this equation gives us, it gives us the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature, which are some of the properties of an ideal gas. So, I hope you guys have time to see the video on, um, yeah, brief description of what the ideal gas equation is and the other gas laws. Okay, so of course, in this equation, P is the pressure, P is the volume, N is the number of moles of the gas trapped in that particular container. R is the gas constant, and in this case, we're going to use R as 8.314. Okay, now of course, R will have a different value depending on the units that you're dealing with. Of course, here we're going to deal with, here we're going to deal with um, the Kelvin, which is going to be the unit of of temperature that you're going to deal with. Otherwise, the, the units here are going to be the joules per mole Kelvin. So the units we're going to have joules mole in Kelvin. Okay. Now, with that in mind, what else are we given here? So since we're dealing with the ideal gas equation, you just want to make sure that everything, every quantity that you want to find is going to be in its standard unit. So want to find the pressure, I quickly make that the subject of the formula by dividing through by the volume. You now have N is equals to RT divided by the volume. Now you want to make sure that every term has the correct unit. So let's go back here. So this is not just conversions. So want to convert this temperature to Kelvins. So 27 degrees Celsius converted to Kelvins. This becomes 300 Kelvins. And the next step, the volume converted to meter cubic. So let me just write this somewhere else. So to meter cubic, of course, this will just become 0 0.000. And then another zero there. And then two, two meter cubic. Okay. So once that has been done, so yeah, let me just keep my, my gas constant. Okay. 
Okay. So now that this has been done, we look at our equation. We know what the temperature is. We know what the volume is. This is the gas, gas constant. Then there's a question mark about the number of moles. So we quickly have to calculate what the number of moles is. So we recall from our chemistry that the number of moles is given by the mass divided by the molar mass. So the mass, here we're dealing with carbon dioxide. The mass of carbon dioxide given is 0 0.4 grams. The molar mass, so you guys have to recall, to calculate the molar mass, if you're dealing with CO2, carbon uh, oxygen has an atomic mass, 12, sorry, not 12, that's 16. So the number of atoms present here, two atoms, means that you get 32. And then carbon has an atomic mass of 12, number of atoms, just one, so you have 12 then, and the molar mass of CO2 comes out as 44 grams per mole, meaning that the number of moles of CO2 will be equal to, so of course here we have 44 grams per mole. So when you work out that, you now have the number of moles of CO2 will be equal to 0 0.0090. 9 moles. Okay. So once we've obtained the number of moles of CO2, we'll go back to our equation. So remember, we had P is equal to N RT over B. So we make our substitution, the number of moles. Multiplying the gas constant, and then this multiplies the temperature in Kelvins. And then this is divided by the volume. So remember, the volume has to be in meter cubic. So here, of course, you can try to work with the units here. All the units are supposed to cancel out. So otherwise, when you work out this and try to simplify it, what you get is going to be 1030661.157 pascals. Now, of course, we can write this. We can, now, we want to convert this to, to ATM. So we have to remember the relationship between a pascal and an ATM. So of course, once you convert, you should see that the pressure, which is initially this 157 pascals, will be equal to 10.3, not three here. So this becomes 10.2 ATM. Or if you don't want to write it in ATM, you can still write it as. 10.3 by 10 to the power 5 pascals. So you can write it like this, or you can write it like that. Okay, so this is one way that you could have uh, worked out this question. It's very easy and straight to the point. I hope you guys were able to follow. Otherwise, in the next video, uh, we're going to move on to another topic. So this is this is where we did the the gas laws. I hope you guys um, understand how to work out the gas laws and how to use the equations involved. If you remember, we had the ideal gas equation. The ideal gas equation had three, three special cases, the Charles law, Boyle's law, and Gaido Sachs law. So I hope you guys know how to use those, those equations. So otherwise, in the next video, we're going to move on to look at um, something else. Probably we're going to go and look at uh, things to do with heat, probably specific heat capacity, heat of fusion and so on. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. This was your tutor.